It was almost six o'clock, so I thought to go out and buy a beer, and go out and sit by the swimming pool and have a little evening sun. So I went out to the bar and got a beer, and carried it outside and wandered down to the garden. It was a fine garden, and there were plenty of chairs around the pool. There were white tables and a hugely brightly colored umbrella and sunburned men and women sitting around in bathing suits. In the pool itself there were about three or four girls and, a, and about a, a dozen boys, all splashing about and making a lot of noise and throwing a large rubber ball at one another. I stood there watching them. The girls were English girls from the hotel, and I didn't know about the boys, but they sounded American, and I thought they were probably young sailors from the American ship which had arrived in the harbor about in the morning. I went out over and sat under a yellow umbrella where there were four empty seats, and poured myself a beer and settled back comfortably with a cigarette. It was a pleasant experience to sit and watch the bathers splashing about in the green water. The American sailors were getting nicely with the English girls. They reached to the point where they were diving under the water and pulling the English girls by their legs. Just then I noticed a small old man walking quickly around the edge of the pool. He was beautifully dressed in a white suit and a cream-colored hat, and as he walked he was looking at the people and the chairs. He stopped beside me and smiled. I smiled back. Excuse me, please, but may I sit here? Certainly, I said. Go ahead. He inspected the back of the chair for safety, then he sat down and crossed his legs. A fine evening, he said. They are all fine evenings here in Jamaica. I couldn't tell if he was an Italian or a Spanish man, but I felt sure he was some sort of a South American. He was old too, when you looked at him closely. Probably around 60 or 80 or 70. Yes, I said. It's a wonderful day here, isn't it? And who are those people? Those are not from the hotel. He was pointing at the bathers in the pool. I think they're American sailors, I told him. Of course they're Americans. Who else in the world is going to make such a noise like that? You're not an American, no? No, I said. I am not. Suddenly, one of those young sailors was standing in front of us. He was still wet from the pool and one of the English girls was standing there with him. Are these chairs free? he said. Yes, I answered. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks, he said. He had a towel in his hand, and when he sat down he rolled it down and produced a packet of cigarettes and a lighter. He offered the cigarettes to the girl, but she refused. Then he offered to me, and I took one. The old man said, Thank you. No. But I think I will have a cigar. He took a cigar out of his pocket and then he produced a knife and cut the end of it out. Here, let me give you a light. The American boy held up his lighter. That will not work in this wind. Sure it will. It works always. The old man removed the cigar from his mouth, moved his head to one side and looked at the boy. Always? He said slowly. Sure, it never fails. Not with me, anyway. Well, well. So, you say this famous lighter never fails. Is that what you say? Sure, the boy said. That's right. He was about 19 or 20, with pale skin and a rather sharp nose. He was holding the lighter in his hands and ready to turn the little wheel. He said, I promise. You, it never fails. One moment, please. The hand that held the cigar came up high, as if it was stopped in traffic. Now just a moment. He had a curiously soft voice and kept looking at the boy odd all the time. He smiled. Shall we not make a little bet on whether ever this lighter lights my cigar?
Sure, I'll bet, the boy said. Why not? You like to bet? Sure, I'll always bet. The man paused and examined his cigar, and I must say it didn't much like the way he was behaving. It seemed like he was trying to embarrass the boy, and at the same time I had a feeling he was enjoying a private little secret. He looked up at the boy and slowly said, I like to bet too. Why don't we have a bet on this thing? A big bet. Now, wait a moment, the boy said. I can't do that, but I, I will bet a dollar if you like that. I'll even bet, a, bet you a ten dollars if, if you like that. Whenever the money is over here. The old man waved his hand again. Listen to me. Let's have some fun. We make a bet. Then we go out, out into my room in the hotel where there's no wind. And I bet you, you cannot light this famous light of yours for ten times one after another without missing once. I'll bet I can, the boy said. All right, good. We make a bet then, yes? Sure, I'll bet you ten dollars. No, 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 no. I'm a rich man. I am a sporting man also. Listen to me. Outside this hotel is my car. It's a very fine car. An American car from your country. A Cadillac. Now, wait a moment, the boy leaned back and laughed. I can't offer you anything like that. That's crazy. It's not crazy at all. You strike the lighter successfully ten times, and the Cadillac is yours. You'd sure like a Cadillac, yes? Sure, I'd like to have a Cadillac. The boy was still smiling. All right, fine, that makes a bit, and I will offer my Cadillac. What do I offer then? The old man said. I never ask you, my friend, to bet something you cannot afford. You understand me, right? So what, what do I bet then? I'll make it easy for you, yes? Oh, okay, you make it easy for me then. Some small thing you can afford to give away, you know, and if you lose it, you wouldn't really feel bad about it, right? Like, like what? Like perhaps the, the little finger on your left hand. My, what? The boy stopped smiling. Yes, why not? You win, you take the car, but if you lose, I take the finger. I don't understand. H how do you mean you, you, you take my finger? I chop it off. That's crazy. I, 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 I'll just bet the ten dollars then. Well, 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 the old man said. I do not understand. You say it lights, but you will not bet. Then we will forget about this then, yes? The boy sat quietly still, staring at the bathers in the pool. Then he remembered that he hadn't lit his cigar. He put it between his lips and opened the lighter and turned the wheel. It lit and burned a small, steady yellow flame. And the way he held his hands meant that the wind didn't get to it at all. Could I have a light too? I said. Oh lord, I'm sorry, I forgot that you didn't have one. He stood up and came over to light my cigarette. There was a silence then, and I could see that the old man had succeeded in disturbing the boy with his ridiculous succession. He was sitting there very still, obviously very tense. Then he started moving about in his seat, rubbing his chest and slowly stroking his back of his neck. Finally he came and placed both of his hands on his knees and began tapping his fingers against them. Soon he was tapping with one of the feet too. Now just let me check I understand, he said at last. You say that we will go to your room and if I make this lighter light ten times, one time after another, I will win a Cadillac. If it misses just once, I lose the little finger in my left hand. 
Is that right? Certainly, that is the bet. But I think you are afraid. What do you do if you lose? Do I hold my finger out while you chop it off? Oh no, that would be no good. And you might even refuse to hold it out. What I would do is I would tie one of your hands to the table before we start and I would stand there with a knife ready to chop the finger off at any moment if the lighter missed. How old is the Cadillac? How old? It is last year's. It's quite a new car, you know. But I see you're not really a betting man. Americans never are. The boy paused for a moment and he glanced first at the English girl and then at me. Yes, he suddenly said. I will bet you. Good, the old man clapped his hands together. Fine, he said. We will do it now. And you, sir, he turned to me, you would perhaps be good enough to, do you know, to call, to be kind of like a referee. Well, I said, I think it is a crazy bet and I don't like it very much at all. Neither do I, said the English girl. It was the first time she had spoken. I think it's a stupid and a ridiculous bet. Are you serious about cutting off the boy's finger if he loses? I said, certainly I am. Also about giving away my Cadillac if he wins. Come on now, we will go to my room. Would you like to put some clothes on first? He said to the boy. No, the boy answered. I come like this. Then he returned to me and considered it a favor if you would come along as a referee. All right, I said. I'll come along, but I don't like this bet. You come too, he said to the girl. You come and watch. The old man led the way back through the garden to the hotel. He was excited now and seemed to make him walk with a little more energy. Would you like to see the car first? It just, it, it's just there. He took us to the pale green Cadillac. There it is, the green one. You like it? That's a nice car, the boy said. All right, now we will go up and see if you can win her. We all went up to the stairs into the large pleasant double bedroom. There was a woman's dress lying across the bottom of one of the beds. First, he said, let's have a little drink. The drinks were all on the small table in the far corner, all ready to be poured, and there was plenty of ice and a couple of glasses too. He began to pour the drinks, and then he rang the bell, and a little later there was a knock at the door, and the maid came in. Ah, he said, putting down the bottle, giving her a pound note. You will do something for me now, please? We are going to play a little game here, and I want you to go away and find me two things. No, three things, actually. I want some nails, I want a hammer, and I want a big knife, a butcher's knife, whichever you can borrow from the kitchen. You can do this for me, yes? A butcher's knife? The maid opened her eyes wide. You mean a real butcher's knife? Yes, of course. Come on now, please. You can find these things for me, surely. Y yes, sir. I, I will try. I will try and bring all of this to you. And she went. The old man handed us the drinks. We stood there drinking. The boy, the English girl, and the little old man with the colorous eyes standing there with his elegant suit on, drinking and looking at the girl. I didn't know what to think about it all. The man seemed so serious about the bet, and he seemed serious about the business of cutting off the finger. But what would we do if the boy loses? Then we'd have to rush him into the hospital in the Cadillac that he didn't win. It would be a stupid and unnecessary thing in my opinion. Before we begin, the old man said, I will present to the referee the key to the car. He produced the key from his pocket and gave it to me. The papers, he said, 
and the insurance are in the pocket of the car. Then the maid came in again. In one hand she had a butcher's knife and in the other she had a hammer and a bag of nails. Good, you got them all. Thank you, thank you. Now you can go. He waited until she had gone and then he put the things on the bed and said, Now we will prepare ourselves. Yes? The old man moved over to the little hotel writing desk away from the wall and removed all the writing things. And now, he said, a chair. He picked up a chair and placed it beside the table. And now the nails. I will put the nails. He fetched the nails and began hammering them into the top of the table. We stood there, the boy, the girl and I, watching the man at work. We watched him hammer the two nails into the table, about 15 centimeters apart, allowing a small part of each of them to stick up. And then he tested that they were firm with his fingers. Anyone would think that he had done this before, I told myself. He never hesitated. The table, the nails, hammer and the knife. He knows exactly what he needs and how to arrange them. And now, he said, all we want is some string. He found some string. All right, at last we are ready. Will you please sit on here next to the table, he said to the boy. The boy sat down. Now place the left hand between those two nails. The nails are only so that I can tie your hand to the place. All right, good. Now I tie your hand securely to the table, like that. He tied the string around the boy's wrist and then several times around the wide part of the hand. Then he tied it tightly around the nails. When he finished, it was impossible for the boy to pull his hand away. He could not move his fingers. Now, please, make a fist, all except for the one little finger. You must leave the little finger sticking out, lying on the table. Excellent, excellent, now we are ready. With your right hand, light the lighter. But one moment, please. He hurried over to the bed and picked up the knife. He came back and stood beside the table with the knife in his hand. Are we all ready? He said. Mr. Referee, you must say when they began. Are you ready? I asked the boy. I am ready. And you? To the old man. Quite ready. He said and lifted the knife up into the air and held, held it there for about 60 centimeters above the boy's finger, ready to cut. The boy watched it. But he didn't really react and his mouth didn't move at all. He only raised his eyebrows and frowned. All right, I said. Go ahead, the boy said. Will you please count the amount of times I light the fire? Yes, I said. I will do that. With his thumb raised to the top of the lighter and again with his thumb he turned the wheel sharply. There appeared a small yellow flame. One, I called. He didn't blow the flame out. He closed the top of the lighter on it and waited perhaps five seconds before opening it again. He turned the wheel strongly and once more there was a small flame. Two. No one else said anything. The boy kept his eyes on the lighter. The man held the knife up into the air and he was watching the lighter. Three, four, five, six, seven. Obviously, it was one of those lighters that really worked. I watched the thumb closely at the top of the flame and then a pause. Then the thumb raising top once again. The thumb did everything. I did a, took a breath, ready to say eight. The thumb turned around the wheel and the flame appeared. Eight, I said, and as I said, the door opened. We all turned and we saw a woman standing in the doorway. 
a small black-haired woman, rather old too, who stood there for about two seconds and then rushed forward, shouting, Carlos! Carlos! She grabbed his wrist and took the knife from him. She threw it under the bed and took hold of the man by his jacket and began shaking him with great strength, talking to him fast, loud and fiercely all the time in some Spanish-sounding language. She pulled the old man across the room and pushed him backwards onto one of the beds. I'm sorry, the woman said. I am so terribly sorry that this had to happen. She spoke almost perfect English. It is too bad, she went on. I suppose it really is my fault. For for ten minutes I left him alone to go out and wash my hair and I come back and he's doing it all again. The boy was untying his hand from the table. The English girl and I stood there and we said nothing. He is a danger to others, the woman said. Where we live at home, he has taken altogether 47 fingers from different people and he has lost 11 cars. In the end, they threatened to put him away somewhere. That's why I brought him up here. We were only having a little bet, whispered the old man. I suppose he bet you a car then, the woman said. Yes, the boy answered, a Cadillac. He has no car, it's mine, and that makes it even worse, she said. He has bet you when he has nothing to bet with. I am ashamed and very sorry about it all. She seemed like a very nice woman. Well, I said, then there's the key to your car. I pull it to the table. We were only making a little bet, whispered the old man again. He hasn't anything to left to bet with, the woman said. He hasn't a thing in the world, not a thing. In fact, I myself won it all from him a long time ago. It was hard work, but I won it all in the end. She looked up at the boy and smiled, a slow and sad smile, and she came over and put the key to the table. I can see it now, that hand of hers it only has one finger on it and a thumb.